to read on all of these developments, a theoretical physicist, best-selling author on the future of humanity, and many others, uh, Dr. Michio Kaku. Uh, doctor, good to have you. Glad to be on the show. So what do you think of what he's outlining on the space stuff? Well, you know, NASA has been criticized as being the agency to nowhere. Mired in so much red tape, you can circle the moon with all that red tape. This could be a game changer, because we're not talking about a whole new ball field. We're talking about going back to the moon, back to Mars, and then even Why do we beyond. want to go back to the moon? Well, you know, we had all this momentum going to the moon, and then we dropped it because of cost. Yeah. It costs about $10,000 to put a pound of anything just in orbit around the moon. That's a orbit around the Earth. That's your weight in gold. That's how much it costs to put you into outer space. But now, because of the work of Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, Silicon Valley billionaires, they want to reduce the cost of space travel by a factor of 10. So it may cost only $1,000 a pound to put something into orbit. That could open up outer space to commercialization, not just space tourism. And then would, would the government be in a backdrop role here as feeding that, or do these guys still foot the bill? Well, the, the government would foot part of the bill, but right. also set the guide rules and the basic agenda, but private industry would fill the gap. Because we're now talking about self-made billionaires building their own moon rockets. Who would have thought Elon Musk has the Falcon Heavy? And Jeff Bezos of Amazon is building his new Armstrong rocket. Right. Two moon rockets funded by private enterprise. Not a single penny of taxpayers' money went to building two moon rockets. But their, their efforts even together, as you, you know far better than I, Doctor, uh, are dwarfed by what the Chinese alone are committing to space initiative. Uh, just, I think, the week before last, they launched a capsule to go to the dark side of the moon, so they're revisiting the moon. They've got a very ambitious undertaking. I was reading somewhere that it's going to dwarf all other countries and their space commitments combined. What do you make of that? Well, the Chinese have stated that they want, yes, they want to put their flag on the moon. And we want to make sure that the United States is not too sure far behind when that happens. stop there, though? I mean, the moon fixation is amazing me because if you've been there, done that, conquered that more than 40 years ago, shouldn't we aim higher or, or no? Well, the goal of NASA now, the new directive, Space Policy Directive Number 1, was to use the moon as a stepping stone yeah. for something bigger, and that's Mars and, quote, beyond. And that may mean mining the asteroid belt. Now, Google billionaires are behind something called planetary resources, where they think that if you could lasso an asteroid in space and bring it down to Earth, you could get up to a trillion dollars in platinum-based metals and rare Earth elements. Hmm. And so they see a new gold rush, a new bonanza in outer space, if we can begin the process of mining the asteroid belt. And that would help to pay the bills for a lot of these very ambitious endeavors oh, onto Mars. So there would be a, a method to it. The, the Space Force, though, I'm, I'm sure the, the Russians were concerned enough about it to want more information on it. Um, and there is this talk that uh, maybe all these superpowers that are interested in exploring space have other motives in mind. Well, you... let's be clear about this. The Chinese have put priority on their militarization of outer space. They've tested killer satellite weapons, yeah. and we are the most vulnerable to killer satellite warfare. The Russians in March, Putin even said that they have developed a new weapon for fighting a nuclear war, the hypersonic drive, which we do not have, and the Russians said that they're ahead of us in building hypersonic so drives which we get back to put the fear of God in people say so we don't it's sort of like it can, the argument JFK used in the 60s to explore space because we don't do it the Russians are right? and so some people are saying what we need is a new outer space treaty that was last signed in 1967 to set the ground rules not that we can't have an air force or a navy or an army no it's that we have to have ground rules for these things so that nations don't accidentally bump into a war and with these new advanced weapons because outer space is very very touch and go i don't trust any of these players though once they're up there they're trying to seize all the edge they can right? well that's what nations do because we yeah. don't pay generals to lose wars we pay generals to win wars and if you're up there with something you've got the edge over anything you have on land right uh, that's right. That's the, called the high ground, the high frontier. Right. And so, first of all, we want to make sure that there are ground rules so that nations don't accidentally start a war that nobody wants. But second of all, beyond that, uh, uh, Trump is saying that we need something like a space force, like an air force, like a navy, with ground rules to assert uh, peace in outer space, not war. Do you think that 
would work that way? Well, that's the rhetoric, and that's the hope anyway. <laughs> You're <laughs> a man of science. Fingers. You're not going to second guess that military mind. But let me ask you finally, sir. Um, you know, we're, we're sending this latest capsule to Mars. Our fixation on Mars knows no bounds. Uh, I guess this next one's going to burrow into the, uh, the Martian surface. Uh, Mars is where we're placing our bets. I, I know the, the late, great Gene Cernan, last man to walk on the moon, had said, you know, uh, you know, space capsules and, and unmanned uh, satellites, they're all great, but you need a man or a woman seeing these, uh, these new places, these new vistas on their own. Uh, is that the next step? And, and if so, is Mars the mo more likely place? Well, Mars is the most likely place because it is closest to the Earth in composition. And one day, it could be a new home. But let me say that all the money that was spent on the Apollo program had a spinoff. One of the spin-offs, in part, was the microchip, the yeah. foundation of the world economy. The miniaturization of transistors to a microchip was, in part, spurred on by the Apollo space program. And people think that if we go to Mars, a new generation of computers will come out as a byproduct, maybe quantum computers or molecular computers that can energize the economy for the next century. And so people are saying that this is an investment not just to sake, for the sake of putting a flag on the Mars, but also for the sake of advancing science, because we're going to learn more about computer technology. We're going to need robots on Mars. We're going to need all sorts of new technologies to begin the process of, of making a permanent settlement on Mars. And that's going to stimulate the economy as a consequence. All right. It's a long trip for those who are going to make it, but someone's going to make it, right? Right. Yeah, I think so. In all our right. lifetime, definitely. Professor, thank you very, very much.